Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. August de Oliveira with the Mod Institute, and I want to talk about something that's really, really cool. Um, so uh, Dentru from True Abutment um, is a 3D printed denture software that is AI based, there's no design involved, and the best part about it is it's free. Uh, so if you wanted to start to do di digital dentures, but maybe we're a little worried about the design aspect of that, um, this is really for you. So before we do anything, let's talk about how we get a scan for a digital denture. Now, Wally has some great, great stuff and some great videos on scanning intraorally. So the patient has no teeth, they come in, um, you scan the arches, um, he has this really cool sort of bite jig thing that he does. Um, I'm gonna hit the easy button and assume the patient has an existing set of dentures that are damaged or they don't like or they can't wear. So think about this, when you do a conventional denture, what are the steps involved? So you take an alginate, the alginate, you know, by nature it's gonna be overextended. Um, you send it to a lab, you get an occlusal rim, and you get um, some custom trays. You take a border molded custom impression and you use the wax rim to get the patient's bite. Um, when you have an existing set of dentures, you kind of already have all that stuff. So what I do is take the patient's dentures, I fill it up with heavy body impression material, go through my border molding step, then I do a wash, and then um, I scan that in my hand. So here we have the patient's upper, um, I used Take One by Kerr, um, did my border molding, did the wash, and I scanned that. I scanned not only the inside or the intaglio, I guess you could say, of the impression, I scanned the patient's teeth as well. So I did that on the upper, I did that also on the lower, and I got the patient's teeth, and I did a buccal bite. Now we're gonna export these files as STL files. Um, this is CIREC, so it does not ex export the bite. However, in Dentru, we have to do one additional step, and that is to get a bite STL file. And so what we want in that bite STL file is actually a combined STL of the patient's upper and lower. And it's actually really simple to do. So if you go to meshmixer.com, and go ahead and download MeshMixer. Um, it's gonna go and give you this great software. Um, MeshMixer we used to use a lot back in the day. We now have so many great free options for dentistry, we don't use it that much. But it's great for combining models. So I'm gonna click Import, and I've got two scans of the patient. And these are the patient's upper and lower impression scans. And so I'm not going to go into too much detail in Mesh Mixer, but you should have something called the Object Browser. And the Object Browser gives you a list of all the STLs on the screen. So I'm going to control click my upper and lower jaw, and we get this content aware menu. We're going to select Combine. It's going to take a second and it's going to combine the upper and lower STL as one. And we can see in the object browser we have one file. So I'm going to export this. Um, I'm going to make sure this is an STL binary format. And we're just going to call it byte scan and hit enter. So if you haven't already done so, um, you can go into trueabutment.com or truesuite.trueabutment.com. I'll post that link and download the TrueSuite line of software. Uh, we can pull that up. And after you've installed it, um, set up an account, log in, you should have this home screen. If you click on service, you'll get a list of modules you can download for free. Go ahead and download install Dentru. So we'll hit run. And it gives you sort of a case center. Um, 
And so we're going to hit start a new project. We're going to go ahead and bring in our STLs. So we'll come over here and we've got an upper STL. It says it's way too big, but that's okay. Hit next. And we've got a lower STL. And we'll hit next. And it's going to want that byte file we created in Mesh Mixer. So we can go ahead and find that. And it's too big. And we'll go to the next step. So in the next step, it's going to ask you some basics on the design of the software. So it's going to ask for the patient and uh, basically how you want it to be set up. So we'll go ahead and put in the patient. We'll just put in some made up initials, patient number, I'll just make something up, select patient's gender, upper and lower, which is not an immediate denture. And we're going to select as the scan type impression denture. This patient is class one, so we'll select that. Teeth mold, you can play around with the different styles if you want. I like Denka Premium. Uh, teeth mold shape, I'm going to select Universal. And teeth arrangement style, I'm just going to select Standard. Um, I do like some festooning on my denture, so I'll hit Select. And we'll select the post dam height. I select one millimeter, 3D printed, obviously. Crossbar is optional. I select no crossbar and select my printer, which is Sprinter. So we're back. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over the first step, which is match. So we're going to go ahead and select some points that are common. And so if we look here at the patient's denture, uh, we can move it around. And you can do that either by left clicking or right clicking. So we'll select some common points. So I'll go ahead and select the midline. I'll select this little area here of impression material. And I'll find something that looks the same on the other side and maybe this area here. And so we're going to match our lower. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. So move these around. Maybe select this midline point. I'll select in between the canine and the premolar. Do it on the other side. Um, let's select between the molar and the premolar. And it's going to show you your matching. And those look pretty good. So we'll hit confirm. So now it's going to ask us to trim. So think about um, the border of your denture in the patient's vestibule and sort of where you want things to end. So I'll start in the post dam area and I'll double click to start. And you're just gonna click po double click points. If you find that it doesn't work, if it keeps turning off your little dots, um, try to get a little closer to each other, but I'm going to be about a millimeter shy of the vestibule. And I'm just going to go around. Here we go. Go ahead and do the same on the lower. And you see here it didn't let me, so it wants it to be a little closer. And save the next. It's going to ask us to verify how we trimmed. It's 
can ask for landmarks. So what it wants is the midline and the two hamular notches. So we'll click here, click about here, and click here. Go on our lower. On the lower, it just wants the retromolar pads. So we'll select the two retromolar pads. And hit submit. It's going to go over what we selected before. And we already did it. This gives you a chance to change it. We'll hit confirm. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, so OK, we're back. Um, so we've, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, adjust how we've matched the upper and lower. And you can see here that we've got a lot of really good speckling here. So um, this is a well-matched upper and lower. Next, we're going to verify um, the trim. Um, and so we can kind of see how we've trimmed that denture. And yeah, we're about a millimeter from the vestibule, maybe a little close in the anterior but nothing uh, a little acrylic burr won't take care of. The next step is going to ask for your occlusal plane. Now, one thing that's interesting about this patient's dentures is on the left, it's sort of writing down a little bit, um, so I don't want to reproduce it. Also, it looks like my midline might be a little bit off, but I am going to go, go ahead and rotate um, sort of this plane, it looks like the midline is off. So if we go to the top here, I can go ahead and grab this and just kind of move it back and forth till I get it in the midline. So now, if we look at it, it looks like we're pretty good. So we've got our midline where we want it. So I'll hit save and next. It's going to ask us again about our teeth molds. We'll hit continue. And it's going to work on setting up the case. So here we are. Uh, we've got our teeth uh, in a nice plane. Um, and what I'm going to do is over here, we should have our bite file. Um, it's this little purple thing that's hard to see. And so what we can see by the patient's old set of dentures is the teeth are pretty kind of uh, set back. So we want to make sure we're on upper and lower. And I like to click move coordinate space. And this just sort of gives you a little widget that allows you to move things. So I'm going to move these forward. I'm going to take a look at this model. And let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. So it looks like maybe I could come down a little bit. and move that over just a little bit. So we look like we're right on. And that's really all there is to it. You can select and move different teeth groups if you want. Um, I find that if you try to mess with the initial setup, um, it kind of gets sort of wonky. Um, so don't do that. Um, just sort of trust the software and move it in different coordinate spaces. So we'll click Submit to Final Submit. And say Festooning Style. It's just going to basically go over what we did before. Hit Confirm. So now it's going to work on this. And that's going to take some time. So uh, give it maybe even up to a half an hour to work. I've got a case that I just did. So and here we have it. So we have a, an upper and lower denture, and we can download it. So when you click on download, it's going to give you a bunch of different options. Um, it just depends on really what you want to do. So it can give you a try and upper, an upper denture, and all upper teeth. I just go ahead and click on download all files, and I already did that. So I'm going to pull that up in Rayware so we can go ahead and print this. So we're going to select a denture base material. Um, so we can go ahead and go to Sprint Ray and we'll go ahead and find our high impact denture base and hit apply. 
and we'll full edit. So we can go to our downloads, and I believe I have it under here. So we've got a whole lot of different files. What we're going to look for is what's marked DB, which is a denture base. So we've got a lower denture base, and we're going to have an upper denture base. So we want to think about supports. And so we have our upper and our lower. And we don't want the supports to go in the intaglio. But in the same vein, we don't want the supports to go into the two sockets. So what I like to do is I position these sort of upright and move it so the flanges are towards the build plate and see if that's better. Okay, so now we've got some supports on the inside, but they're mostly on the flanges, and we have no supports in the two sockets. So we can go ahead and print this, um, and that's it. So thank you for listening. And if you want to learn more, go to themodinstitute.com.